Hi, welcome to Remember This. I'm your host, Denise Bolin, and I'm so excited to have on with me today two country music legends. Uh, T. Him, T. Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> and it doesn't mean old. It doesn't mean old. <laughs> We have T.G. Shepard and Kelly Lang. So T.G. Shepard is a singer-songwriter that's been in the, the mainstay in country music scene since the mid-1970s. He yes. scored 22 number one hits on the U.S. country charts with eight consecutive number one between 1980 and 1982. He is one of the most popular country music artists that's been touring since the 1980s and puts on one of the most electric shows in country music and he was a dear friend of elvis presley and uh and we'll get him to share a little bit about that and kelly lang is a singer songwriter and author she's written songs for her husband and crystal gale the oak ridge boys bj thomas just to name a few she's performed duets with tg sir barry gibb her longtime friend dame olivia newton john lee greenwood and she's also authored the book I'm not going anywhere and has recorded the song and video for the book. Guys, welcome to the show. Thank you, Denise. Thanks for having it's us. It's good to see you today, Denise. Finally get a chance to uh, put the name with the face. Yes, yes, absolutely. This is a, this is such an honor for me. Great great to meet you, TG. Pleasure. Um, oh my. We it's a very special day for us. We're excited. It's a you know, we look for these dates to do interviews like with you, Denise, when we have something exciting happening. And of course, today is the release date of our new duet album called Chemistry that we've been working on for two incredibly long years. And it finally got finished. And today is the day the baby's born. I was going to say, it feels <laughs> like we're having a, a child, doesn't it? Right, yeah. right, right. Should be passing out cigars. Well, congratulations. It's amazing. You know what, Kelly, I love that you do the covers and, um, you know, you, you do. And what I, I always say, I'm decade impaired. I'm stuck in the 70s. So I love that you cover these songs from the 70s. Hey. And your your duet album is songs from the 60s and 70s. Well, it kind of encompasses a lot of different eras. Yeah. There's uh, something from the 60s. Uh, I think it was... Uh, Oh my goodness. I love you more today than yesterday was too my late, best. baby. Yeah, that was 60s. Okay. Okay. Um, and then we've got one song that I wrote for TG. You know, we we are very grateful for our love story. We're very appreciative of each other's um lives. And one of the song one of the things that we've talked about before is that the word love is not really strong enough for how we feel about each other. So I wrote a song called Addicted to You, and it was on his Midnight in Memphis album. But as we were looking for songs for this project, it seemed like it would make even a better duet. And I, I've enjoyed performing that with well, him so we, much. We found that true with a lot of songs on this album that were not necessarily duets before, yeah. but they lent themselves to duets like uh, Too Late Baby or like the Shania Twain song, uh, Still the One, or even the Celine Dion song, uh, Because You Love Me. Yeah, It fit the way we feel toward each other. And so we always have felt it's important to feel the music that you record because the people can tell if you're into it or yeah. not. In this album, we we really got into it. Absolutely. And when you're really in love, like like the two of you are, and you sing the love songs, you, it, you feel the love, it comes through. It comes through in your music. Now, mm -hmm. what I what I love is that you don't, you don't try to sound like the original singers. You make it your own. And I think that's beautiful. And you do an amazing job, both of you. <laughs> Well, I would love to try to sound like Celine. <laughs> it's just not going to happen. You know, it was really funny, Denise. Um, when you're in the in the trenches of recording something, you're thinking about the lyrics or you're thinking about the dynamics of the musicians or the, the way that it's structured. So you don't emotionally attach to the song until afterwards. And um, I thought something really interesting happened in the studio. Once we played this, in particular, the song, Because You Loved Me, that was the last song we added to the album and it was we were hesitant because it is a, it's a huge song i mean celine blew it out of the water who oh, can boy. touch that so he and i were both a little intimidated by recording it but the words meant a lot to us so i was really moved by listening to it and i was emotional about it because every lyric to that song really seems like it's what we would say to each other and have said to each other 
Um, but then when I slipped over on the couch and I saw his tears streaking down his face when he heard it, uh, it it blew my mind because we were able to step back from it from a working perspective and look at it as a listener would be. And it's it's definitely our love song. I think I think any time you're recording music that touches you, it's OK to show a tear or two. And uh, that's why I love you. Oh, <laughs> But a, a lot of these songs on the chemistry, the new chemistry album, is that way. I mean, they really affected us deeply. And you can hear my voice crack in a few places when I may be close to tearing up while singing or and vice versa with her. But it just uh, it, it's just been a labor of love. And we were afforded a great luxury of, of course, owning our own label, uh, record label. And having everything in house, we weren't dictated to do an album weekly for the money. We took our time to do it strictly because it was an emotional thing for us. So we uh, we did take a long time to do it, though. And you know what? There were some songs that we recorded that, didn't, that make. didn't make the album. They just didn't seem to. I don't know, it didn't fit the project yeah. and maybe they'll fit another project later. I don't yeah. know, but, and, and it was really funny. I heard you say in an interview the other day, when you record a duet project, you're really recording two duet projects because you've got two different voices, two different uh, levels of, of uh, the keys that we sing in are different. So you have to work double hard to get it to work together where there'll be modulations in the song. If I couldn't reach the, the melody, you know, so I felt really sorry for Buddy, our engineer. He was just like, oh, okay, we got to recut this part now. We got to redo this now because it's like recording two totally different songs and then mending it together. Yeah. And that's what took so long. Yeah. Well, yeah, it's definitely a long creative process, but definitely, definitely worth the wait. Now oh. you have such a beautiful love story and uh, Kelly has shared with me um, when she knew that moment, she knew that you were the one. So I want to ask you, TG, when, when did you know that Kelly was the one for you? I don't know. I can't remember a time when Kelly wasn't in my life, Denise. Um, I met Kelly when she was very young. Uh, I was opening for Conway Twitty on the road in the seventies and, uh, Kelly's career was already in, in full bloom then. And as, as a teenager, when she was 13, 14, 15 years old. So I don't know. I, th I think it happened when she came to see me in concert one day. Uh, really? Yeah. Well, I had a theater in Pigeon Forge and uh, she was there and I, I, I felt something very strong. And you're hearing I, it first because I haven't heard this. But <laughs> I, I also felt it when... <laughs> I played a show years ago called Jamboree in the Hills with 60,000 people there on my birthday. And uh, Kelly was there, and I don't know why I did this, but I just reached over and kissed her real quick. He kissed it, all the girls. I wasn't the one he chose. <laughs> but I, I don't know. I, I don't know when that time really was. It's just something that we grew into. We both married and had children and had our own lives and then we found each other later in life and thank god we did and it's uh you know what's great about that though is a lot of times they say that second marriages or you know multiple marriages in or whatever that you have more of a um destined to divorce or separate easier i find that to completely the opposite because We've both been through things that we don't want to go through again, and it's made us greatly appreciate what we have, and we know how unique and special our story is, and we cherish it. You know, we we pray over our marriage each night, and we're just, we're very aware of how unique and, and grateful and blessed we are. So I think it's it's caused us to have a little bit more glue, you know, than if we had not a lot, a lot of glue between us. <laughs> I like that. Yeah. That's awesome. So, okay. So do you have any favorites off this album or if you, are there a few that you like, or do you have one? Uh, one well, I, I'm kind of partial to, uh, because you love me, uh, because of the meaning behind the song, the Celine Dion song, but I, I have a favorite on the album too. That is, I don't know how big a single it was. I think it was a number one song for Kenny Rogers. It never was a duet called morning desire. 
And that song just really is a romantic song lyrically. It just says so much about two people waking up next to each other and being in love. And uh, I, I or really, less, or I think I it's mean, less. <laughs> but I, I don't know. I, it, it's hard to pick a favorite because they're all such favorites of ours through the time. I mean, these songs are woven into the tapestry of our lives, and. Uh, hopefully other people will sense that too when they hear the songs they'll go oh gosh yeah. I used to love that song my favorite to perform though is Too Late Baby we yeah. really enjoyed that it's it's just got a cool groove to it you know and it you can tell which song it is the second it begins and it's yeah. fun to perform yeah. yes absolutely Carol King yes love it um so I saw, because, you know, I'm doing research on you, TG, and I found that video, Fooled Around and Fell in Love, and I'm like, what girl is gonna, he's going to end up with? <laughs> that was a fun video. As a matter of fact, yes. it was, I was in the back of a limo in Los Angeles, Denise, and I picked up the uh, Los Angeles paper, and they had the top 10 videos of the year. And there I was amongst Michael Jackson and... Uh, Sting and all these pop acts, and they had fooled around and fell in love. Uh, the video was one of the top. And the reason being that my love interest in the video was the orangutan that they used in Every Which Way But Loose with Clint Eastwood. And it was a hilarious video to shoot. It's very comical. It was directed by Martin Kahan, who is probably one of the greatest directors uh, of videos, music videos. And um, What's scary, though, is you were very convincing. <laughs> well, I mean, you know, I mean, an orangutan. I mean, I I mean, know. You know, the sad thing is that uh, she never writes. She never calls. <laughs> I totally forgot about you. Long <laughs> I'm plan B, huh? <laughs> <laughs> but it, it, it was fun. We shot that video, believe it or not, at Billy Joel's estate in New York. Oh, Long wow. I okay. Yeah. I think he's since sold it to Seinfeld. I, I don't know who owns it now, but. We shot it there, and it was a fun video shoot that day to do that. And uh, but yeah, I feel run fell in love was uh, one of those hits. That, uh, I laughed, I laughed. And Kelly, you have your alter ego that cracks me up. Oh, <laughs> so, you ever gonna do like maybe a, a, a funny music video together? Maybe. Why not? Why not? That, I, that I keep so trying to good. I keep trying to kill her off. You know, I, oh maybe, no, don't do that. Yeah, there's there's been some little footages that we've done as she's trying to break us up, you know, and, and I have to get in a fight with her, but the, it, it's just such a silly thing. And and the reason I created it in the first place is I was uh, in a writing appointment with Lori Morgan and, and uh, her piano player, Mark Oliverius and uh, what we call fanfare CMA fest. I was going on and Lori was talking about a lot of different fans get her songs incorrect or get her name incorrect and they're very passionate about what they do so i showed up at the next writing session with with them dressed as this kooky character and that got her name all wrong and everything right and it just kind of snowballed from it's there stuck. yeah and, it, and her name is xoxo you can look her up on xoxo country on youtube and there's just some ridiculous oh, wow. videos um of her on there and i i it, you know what i think humor is healing and it, it brought me through some really traumatic times when I was diagnosed with breast cancer and um, hopefully it, it's made some people smile along the way too. Oh, absolutely. So I want to tell my audience that in case they're not familiar with TG, they have to know you from this. <laughs> I go out and buy it and they only have they to might not know they know him from that, but they might. The best yeah. part of waking up is Folgers in your cup. I was very fortunate to be awesome. involved with that commercial uh, in the very beginning in the early 80s. It, it's paid a lot of house notes uh, for us. Uh, I was able to write part of I this. Mean, it's, it's a staple. You know, it, everybody like knows that song. Everyone that, you know, was around for the 80s. I mean, I could still hear it. If I'm shopping and I see Folgers, your voice comes into my head. I didn't realize they had caramel flavor, though. That's, that's I went this morning to get thing. it. Yeah. This is all they yeah. had. So this looks pretty interesting. Yeah, yeah I'm going to have to pick that up. And, and, you know, the beautiful thing about Folgers is that I was able to have my own NASCAR team for eight years. Nice. Uh, the T.G. Shepard Folgers racing team. I had uh, Mark Martin as my driver and uh, Tim Richmond. And, uh, oh, gosh, I, I, I had so many. Uh, uh, Ken Schrader had so many great drivers, but. 
you know, being involved with a corporate sponsor uh, has always is always something that every performer hopes to get in their career and to have Folgers and Procter and Gamble involved in my career for so many years uh, was really a luxury. And now it's uh, Springer Mountain Springer Farm. Mountain Farm. Yeah. Uh, our friend uh, Springer Mountain Farms Chicken, Gus Arendale, we are spokesmen for that company. But uh, yeah, I drink Folgers in our house every day. <laughs> nice. Nice. Can, can you tell, um, tell us a little bit about you and Elvis? Well, you know, Elvis was one of those unique individuals that every person wanted to meet uh, or just to see, uh, to be in his presence. And, you know, it's funny that at 13 years old, I remember telling my mom before I ran away from home at 15, that someday I was going to meet Elvis and he was going to become my friend. And my mother would say to me, now, son, the chances of you meeting Elvis, let alone becoming his friend, are astronomical. So I'm afraid you got your hopes up a little too high. But I always felt that I would meet him someday. And lo and behold, I met him at a skating rink late one night when I was 15. As I say, I was a runaway. I was living in alleys, alleyways and eating out of garbage cans. And uh, he actually just saved my life. Uh, at a roller rink, he pulled up in a Cadillac and got out and he said, I'm a man short on my team. We play a little game in here each night called kill rollers, uh, football on skates. And we skated and then went to Graceland afterwards for the famous peanut butter and banana sandwich. And that was the start of one of the greatest close friendships that I ever had, let alone with another entertainer. He even gave me my first tour bus to kind of get me started. So he was a great friend. It sounds like a lifetime movie, doesn't it? Yeah. It really does. You know, I, I saw an interview with Whitney Houston yesterday, <laughs> and she was talking about Elvis because her mom was one of the backup singers yeah. for Elvis. Yeah. And uh, I think it was Oprah or somebody that was interviewing her. And she said, I, I understand you met Elvis. And she said, no, you don't meet Elvis. You experience him. <laughs> she said she, you know, it was a little girl at the time. And she said, I just was in the room and his presence comes in. She said, you don't go up and meet him. You just experience the, the moment. And I thought that was really cute. You know, the strangest thing about Elvis Denise was the fact that he was just a guy. And um, I don't think he ever really realized how big he was. And I think that's what made people drawn to him is the fact that he was the real deal with no ego. Mm -hmm. And uh, he was just one of those unique individuals that you could have your back to the door of a room and he can walk in that door and you knew when he entered, although you didn't see him, you felt the presence. It was a, a very electrifying energy feel that anytime you were in his presence, it was just spectacular. Do you think he was aware of it? I think he knew his his draw and his, you know. But that's got to be weird to be the owner of that, you know. That would be Elvis was interesting. Was a, was a very strong faith, faithful, driven person. He he was a strong Christian, and he used to sit and read me the scriptures and tell me his interpretation of them from the Bible. And I asked him one day. I said, Elvis, how did you get here? How did this happen for you? And he said, I willed it. And I said, what do you mean? He said, well, I would ride around in the old Crown electric truck. I was an apprentice electrician. And I would be driving around Memphis and I'd be dreaming of walking out on stage and having thousands of people stand there to hear me sing. And he said, I dreamed it, ate it, slept it so long for so many years that one day I walked out on stage and there they were. Wow. He so it. Yeah. It's like he manifested it. Or, yeah. Yeah. That's the really mind cool. is a powerful right. thing. Right. We could speak mm -hmm. life and yeah. death with our words. Yeah. yeah. Very yeah. powerful. Mind yeah. don't matter. Yeah. I, I, I had Pat Boone on and um, he was saying how Elvis wanted to go to church, but he couldn't. No. That's like, why is like, because everybody would be looking at me. I would be a huge distraction. You know, so um, that and that was one of the downfalls of his success. He really couldn't go places like us. You know, he didn't have that freedom because. I think that's true with any megastar that their star is so bright. 
And it's a shame that sometimes the star is so bright that it burns out quicker. And in Elvis's case, it did. But he never could do anything that all of us take for granted. Like I remember at Christmas each year, he wanted to go Christmas shopping, but he couldn't. But what he would do, he would call the department store and at midnight and they would open up the department store where he could go through and Christmas shop for everyone in one building. And then, you know, they'd send him the bill. And it's a give and take though. I mean, normal people would love that opportunity, you know, or to have the ability to shut down a, a roller rink or a <laughs> the Liberty land, right. it, you know, there's give and take with that. I'm sure he enjoyed his life for sure, but I'm, I'm sure he probably missed some of the, the normalcy too. There's a, uh, there's a price that's paid for that much fame. And yeah. sometimes it's your life that you give up uh, to be who you are. You know, I had a conversation with Lee Greenwood a while back. Oh, I love and this. Yeah, I, I do too. And I, I was asking, Bible. yeah, it's neat, isn't it? Um, I said, I said, Lee, do you enjoy being famous? Because some people that are famous don't even know they're famous. True. You know, um, Olivia Newton-John never knew, never got it. She couldn't, mm -hmm. couldn't wrap her brain around that. But I, I asked That's Lee and he icon. says, yeah, I said, Lee, do you, do you enjoy being famous? And he says, well, yes, there's lots of perks to it. He says, but love is like an, I mean, a fame is like an island. Yeah. It's it's very isolated, and you know you got to be mindful of who you can trust and who you can let in, and and uh, it secludes you from things that you take for granted. And I thought that was a really interesting way of looking fame at is fame. An fame is an island. It it is. Um, I mean, I've had an inkling of what the Greenwood would have, and, and or you would have, but um, it it does it changes the dynamic, no doubt. Yeah, you guys are huge, though. He's huge. No. I'm just along for the ride. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> I don't know about that. You know what's great though, Denise, is that um, I'm really well aware of his accomplishments, and I'm his biggest cheerleader, and he is mine. You know, and I love and that. We're very we're, we have no competition between us. I learn from him, and I admire him, and I think that's what makes it work because we have such respect for each other. The talents that I have, he doesn't, and vice versa, and it it really is like a puzzle piece that fits really nicely together. That's wonderful. And you're coming out with a TV show? Well, I don't know if it's TV well, show. It, we're working podcast. on a podcast that will be videoed. And um, we're looking forward to that. But it's for some reason, we keep putting it off. Well, we've got a lot going on, too. So it's time consuming. Yeah, it, it, it's going to take a lot of time. And, uh, you know, we're at this point right now, we're trying to find the time to, <laughs> to right. do a podcast. Because once you start it, it's a weekly thing that you have to uh, adhere to and we are not quite there yet but we're getting closer and I think once we start we'll enjoy it yeah. but just the, the initial you know tackling of it is a little overwhelming yeah. right so I'm gonna let you guys go but before I do I want you to talk about your song uh Tennessee Moon mm -hmm. oh yeah I was so excited to to perform that last night on the Grand Ole Opry and uh it was neat because my mom, whom I wrote the song for, was able to be there. And, you know, she hasn't been feeling great lately. So um, to have her in the audience was a thrill for me and, and for her especially. But on Monday, I get to go to the state capitol and the governor of Tennessee is handing me a proclamation. Um, awesome. you know, it's going to be kind of like the seal, you know, for me. And, and it'll make it more authentic than real to me because right now it just seems like I can't even believe it happened, but it's become the new Tennessee state song um, right up there with Rocky Top and Tennessee Waltz. I mean, it, it's forever in history. And I was teasing earlier with an interview that now my kids are proud of me. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's like the seal of approval from my kids. I'm good. <laughs> I, want, I want to mention too, to anyone that wants to keep up with what we're doing or our tour schedule or music or whatever they can go to. Uh, our website's tgshepherd.com or kellylane.net or follow us on our socials or on YouTube and keep up with what we're doing. And uh, we're doing a lot. So I say it's a very exciting day to be able to uh, visit with you, Denise, and uh, to have the release of our new album, uh, Chemistry. Uh, Congratulations again. And so, baby's born today. You can purchase 
we can go to either of those websites to purchase. Yeah, or anywhere music is downloaded, you can go if, get it. If you'd like an autographed copy, go to tgshepherd.com or kellylang.net. Yeah, we'll um, otherwise, it. it's everywhere music is streamed and, and you can purchase or, or download on any, any platform. Thank you. My God, you guys are amazing and don't ever stop. <laughs> don't ever stop. Uh, we'll try not to. <laughs> as long as people like you are there, we'll be doing this. I, I want to tell you that it's just a joy to be able to sit and visit with you today. And I hope we can do it again real soon. I would love that. I would love that. This Thank was you, wonderful. This Thank was you. Wonderful. You have a great day today. Thank you, you so too. much. God bless you both. Thank, Thank you. you. You too. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.